67, Jean Benet Ramsey. She is the child of Patsy and John Ramsey from Boulder, Colorado. She has blonde hair, green eyes. Tonight, new evidence about the murder of a six-year-old beauty queen and about the prime suspect who might have killed her. Name and how old you are? My name is Jean Benet Ramsey and I'm five and a half. The torture and killing of Jean Benet Ramsey in her parents' home on Christmas night reverberated around the world. It made her the most famous murdered child in history and her millionaire parents, accused of the killing, the most hated couple in America. We, the jury, find John Bennett Ramsey liable for the wrongful death of John Benet Ramsey. John Ramsey liable. <laughs> and as to Patsy? We, the jury, find Patsy Ramsey liable for the wrongful death of John Benet Ramsey. Because we're the parents, we're the murderers. Is that the thesis? I. It's sad if that's what we think is a society of of ourselves i don't know what they think all i know is we didn't do it i don't know what happened god knows and he's not telling few believed them but despite all the accusations and outrage the parents were never charged today they live quietly in michigan a remote area of the u.s north of detroit America is beginning to forget. The murder of their daughter is slipping out of the headlines. But that is now about to change. A completely new team of investigators has recently uncovered dramatic new facts about the murder. They have identified a number of suspects, including one who is now their prime suspect. We've gained more information in the last year than probably the prior four or five years. It's now a whole new area of the John Bonnet Ramsey case. Um, we now have evidence that will tell you who the killer is. Boulder, Colorado, one of America's most remarkable cities. At the foot of the Rocky Mountains, its high-tech companies have attracted many of America's most talented people. With its own skiing resort, exclusive restaurants and bars, it is a haven of affluence and privilege. But the murder of John Benet, seven years ago, has revealed a darker, bleaker side to Boulder. The story of that murder began here at the Ramsey's home on Boxing Day morning, 1996. Her parents say they awoke early to find their six-year-old daughter, John Benet, missing from her bedroom and a ransom note lying on the stairs. Minutes later, Patsy Ramsey called the police. We were kidnapping. Hurry, please. Explain to me what's going on, okay? There, we have a There's a note left in our daughter's door. A note was left in your daughter's yes. gun. How old is your daughter? Six years old. She's blonde. Six years old. Oh my God, please. The police arrived within minutes. From the outset, they suspected the parents. Their suspicion grew when John Ramsey, asked by the police to search the house, found his daughter's body in this small cellar room. By the time John Benet's body was removed from the house that night, police already believed the parents were responsible. It was leaked to the media that not only was there no evidence of a break-in, but no one could have got in because there were no footprints in the snow. The media was then told that there was evidence of pornography and sexual abuse. When the police leaked their belief that Patsy Ramsey had killed her daughter in a fit of temper about bedwetting, 
and then staged a kidnapping to cover it up, media coverage became hysterical. Tonight on Hard Copy, a bombshell in Boulder. A published report puts John Benet Ramsey in her parents' own bed when the brutal attack began. The most likely scenario is that John Benet went up to her parents' bedroom, wet and weepy. Her frazzled mum completely lost it and battered her. Police interrogators put the bedwetting theory to Patsy Ramsey. How about the theory that this was an accident? John Bonet got up or something happens. There's an accident. Somebody You're going down the wrong path, buddy. Okay. Somebody accidentally or somebody gets upset over bedwetting. That's one of the things that's been proposed. Okay. Didn't happen. If she got up in the night and ran into somebody, it was somebody there that wasn't supposed to be there. I don't know what transpired after that, whether it was an accident, intentional, premeditated, or whatnot. But it was not one of her three family members that were also in that house. Period. End of statement. Like the Boulder police were convinced she was lying. Outside prosecutors were appointed who took the case to a grand jury, asking that the Ramses be indicted for murder. Yet District Attorney Alex Hunter surprised everybody when he announced the result. We do not have sufficient evidence to warrant the filing of charges against anyone who has been investigated at this time. Most Americans, led to believe the parents were guilty, greeted the announcement with disbelief. But two years ago, ITV's real crime revealed the shocking truth behind the decision not to indict the Ramses. It showed that the case against the parents was spurious and untrue. No evidence of sexual abuse or pornography had ever been found. And police photographs showed not only hardly any snow around the house, but clear evidence of a break-in. ITV also revealed that the police theory that John Benet had been killed by a sudden angry blow was also untrue. Forensic evidence shows she had been hit on the head, but only after being immobilized with a stun gun, tortured and garroted. If someone is hit on the head with any force at all, It'll either swell or it will bruise or it will bleed. In the case of John Bonet, there was no swelling, there was no bleeding, there was no bruising. If John Bonet was hit on the head first, there would be some length of time between the time you would even think of staging this crime. Then you would have to go out and you would have to find duct tape, you would have to find cord, and you would have to construct a garrot, and you would have to tie her hands, and you would have to bring her down into the basement. And then you would have to sexually assault your own daughter. If that would have taken all that time to do this, there would have been massive bleeding inside that skull. So it's ludicrous even to think that the head blow came first. The head blow came last, almost at the time of death. Despite this, and despite the grand jury verdict, the Boulder police maintained unrelenting pressure on the parents. If I told you right now that we have trace evidence that appears to link you to the death of John Bonet, what would you tell me? That is totally impossible. Go retest. How is it impossible? I did not kill my child. I didn't have a thing to do with it. And I'm not talking you know, somebody's guess or some rumor or some story. I'm I don't care what you're talking about. I'm talking about I, scientific evidence. I don't give a flying flip how scientific it is. Go back to the damn drawing board. I didn't do it. John Ramsey didn't do it, and we didn't have a clue of anybody who did do it. My life has been hell from that day forward, and I want nothing more and to find out who is responsible for this. Okay? I mean, I want to work with you. 
not against you. Okay? This child was the most precious thing in my life. And I can't stand the thought of thinking that somebody's out here walking on the street. God knows they might do it again to some other child. You know, quit screwing around asking me about things that are ridiculous and let's find the person that did this. Crime there was widespread concern that murder detective Lou Smith had resigned because of how the parents were being treated. I think the case is in deep trouble. And I think it's in deep trouble because the Boulder Police Department has really staked its reputation on the Ramseys being guilty. And once that's happened, that police department can't perform its function. That edition of Real Crimes was so controversial, it did not go out in the US for over a year. But insiders in Boulder knew what was happening. Within days of the program's eventual transmission, District Attorney Mary Keenan took the case away from local police and called Lou Smith back to lead a new investigation. For most Americans still convinced of the parents' guilt, it was another unexpected twist. But they are about to hear much more extraordinary news. During the past year, the new investigation set up by the DA's office has uncovered dramatic facts about the killing that will shock America and which identify an entirely new prime suspect. After ITV reported on the Ramsey murder, Lou Smith, the detective who did most to clear the parents, was called back by the Boulder District Attorney to lead a new investigation. Because of this, he is bound by the confidentiality of her office and no longer able to talk to us. But the Boulder DA's office is neither equipped nor funded to carry out major murder investigations, so it has also sought the help of private detectives, once employed by the Ramses to hunt the killer. These investigators have been involved from the beginning. Although now unpaid volunteers, because of the DA's limited resources, they are an important part of the new investigation, and they are free to talk. They are led by Ollie Gray, one of America's leading private detectives. He and his partner, John San Agustin, have worked on some of the nation's biggest cases. The Boulder police tried to hire them the day after the murder, but only to pursue the parents, so they declined to help. David Williams, one of Colorado's leading private detectives, was also involved from the first day. Former investigator Jennifer Getty was hired a week later by the parents. They are deeply disturbed by what they have discovered. There was um, information turned over to the Boulder police that there were several individuals who had not yet been interviewed who lived on the block. It has become clear that the Boulder police even failed to carry out proper house-to-house -house inquiries. We're finding out that there were people that were never even followed up. I mean, literally people within, you know, a hundred feet. There were certain individuals in the neighborhood who had criminal backgrounds that had never been talked to. They include two men living near the Ramsey home who left Boulder immediately after the murder. Both have criminal records, yet neither has been interviewed. Two convicted pedophiles who live nearby have also never been eliminated. These detectives have found, too, that the Boulder police dismissed important information if it pointed away from the Ramseys. They would either treat it with indifference or they would attempt to discredit it. Early on, the Boulder Police Department made their minds up about the Ramseys, and that was that. Frustrated by police indifference, many with information passed it instead to the Ramsey lawyers. Eventually, the paperwork on these leads filled 67 boxes. The leads were given to the police, but little was done. Well, they were Anything manipulating what they were telling everybody yeah, is what they were doing because it didn't go along with their theory. These detectives have discovered an even more dramatic failure.